When a person operates consistently in a particular gifting, it becomes like a mantle residing on a person. So what does that mean? Basically, that means this. When you're continually focusing on one part of your calling and your gift, and you have at it, and you keep at it, God is what he's going to do is increase that and make it stronger as you develop in that gift. Whatever gift that is, you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there's nine gifts of the Spirit, pick one. I don't know. Maybe you're in one of those categories. Maybe you have more than one. But still in all, when you have all the gifts of the Spirit, there's going to be one gift that God's going to say, this is the gift that's going to supersede out of all your gifts. Why do I say that? Well, me as an apostle, I, I walk in that office, but my prophetic gift is stronger. I have a prophetic mantle as a, as a prophet. That's my, that's my gift. That's my baby. That's what God says. You're an apostle, yes, but I want you to walk in the prophetic. You see what I'm saying? So when you walk in one uh, category of one office, you have to keep at that office. And don't worry about all of them. You may be multitasking a few. You may have a little piggybacking with you. You may operate in healings and casting out devils. You may have a teaching gift. But within all those gifts, there's going to be one that's going to supersede all of them. It may be a teaching, a strong teaching anointing you may have. That's a gift. It may supersede a prophetic mantle. So God just said, you have been called to teach the body of Christ, or you have been called as an evangelist, or you have been called as this, or a pastor, what have you. You see? So we have to know exactly what our gift is so we can operate and fully function in that gift. Now, that person can operate in a particular gift, gift of the Spirit, consistently with a significant level of accuracy or success. This is what God is trying to tell us. When a person operates a specific gift or gift, plural, of the Spirit consistently with a significant level of accuracy or success, for example, words of knowledge, prophecy, miracles, those are three manifestations of the, of the gift of the Spirit. But when you focus on one, like I said before, you're going to see they're going to supersede the other. You're going, to get, you're going to get portions of word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Like it happens to me. I'll get a word of wisdom sometimes. I'll get a word of knowledge sometimes. But still in all, my prophetic mantle is to prophesy to the church, to give a word in due season. It doesn't always come, but when it does come, it comes. So knowing that, you have to look at the sovereign realm. So now I want you to go to Second Chronicles in the Old Testament. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. Let's go there. And I think with this will be the last verse. I'm going to read this to you, and you can read along with me. 2 Chronicles 5, 12 through 14 says this. And the Levites, who were the singers, all those of Asaph and Heman and Judutan, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white living, having cymbals, stringed instruments and harps, and with them 120 priests surrounding with trumpets. Verse 13. Indeed it came to pass, when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard, and, and praising and thanksgiving the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud, so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord fill the house. So, in other words, what that text is basically telling us is this. The presence and glory of God invaded and filled the atmosphere. Also, yeah. the glory of God appeared as a visible cloud. What else? People were unable to stand because of the glory of the cloud. They fell over. It's like when you pray for people in a meeting and they fall over. What happened? Well, the glory of the Lord comes upon them. You can't see it. But in the supernatural things that I mentioned before, these, these things that's happening, the invisible things, the power of God becomes present 
just like we saw in, in the Second Chronicles, but you don't see it in, in the New Testament. We don't see it that way. We just, it's invisible. But still, no, people don't believe in that stuff. They don't believe people should be falling down. But that, that devil is a liar because the power of God comes on people and they're going to fall down. I don't care what they say. I don't know what the nominations are saying that, but that's still, that's still biblical. People fall down on the power of God. I don't care what you heard, what you read. The Bible teaches that all over New Testament and Old Testament. Also, there is a greater level of uh, there's a gra- there's a much greater level of supernatural operation, as we see in the text. Also, the manifestations that take place depend on the level of the presence of God. Okay, I'm going to say that again. The manifestations that take depend on the level of the presence of God. It is up to you. It is up to I, up to me, to develop a presence so that we, people can feel it so thick they can cut it with a knife. When you operate in the supernatural and you're praying for people, it has to come into a, a manifestation that they get, you get next to them and they can say, oh, my goodness, I feel the presence of God. Yes, you can be that one. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm not trying to uh, brag about myself. I'm a very humble person. But well, I went to a church one time, and I walked into the church, and the bishop told me, oh, my God, when you walk through those doors, I felt the presence of God. And I looked at my life, and I said, oh, really? I didn't know that. You see what I'm saying? So when you have, you develop some kind of, of relationship with Christ and the Holy Ghost, it's going to resonate. It's going to drip over you like oil. It's going to come so much. It's going to be prevalent in your life that you're going to walk as Peter did, and your shadow alone is going to heal people. That's been prophesied to me. I'm waiting for that one. I can't wait till that to happen and manifest in my life. But a, uh, another apostle told me one time, he said, man of God, you're, going to, you're coming into a dimension that when you walk by people, your shadow is going to heal them. I said, well, Jesus, I can't wait for that one. I look forward to that one. I want that one. You see? So there's always more. But still in all, the same glory, as we see in Second Chronicles, is the same God, the same Holy Ghost. He wants to put that power on you. He wants people to feel the presence of God on you. So then you walk into a room, my God, the devil's going to start shaking his boots. Same thing when you get on a phone call. They're going to say, my God, I can hear God through your voice. I can sense the Holy Ghost through your lips. And that's what God wants us to be. That's exactly where God wants us to be. Now, uh, here we go. Let me give you two more. Many people experience the supernatural power of God at the same time. And finally, there are angels present as ministering spirits, and they may be seen by some people. Also, people have had testimonies of, of angels in their meetings. Why? And I'll give you an example. When the presence of God is so strong in the place and the presence of God is resonating in the place because of the worship, there have been testimonies that people have seen angels. Why? Because angels like to hang out with God. If I was an angel, I'd be hanging out with him like that too. I won't want to leave his presence. One day we'll be that way. But until the time comes, we're over here, he's over there, and we just get a little glimpse of his glory. But angels come into our meetings when they feel the presence and the glory of God. They attract. They get attracted to these type of meetings. So what am I telling that to you? When you go, wherever you go, when you walk in this power that God wants to fill on you and it's coming out of you like, like magnets, the angels are going to be attracted to you. Oh, my God. They're going to be attracted to you. They're going to want to hang around you some more. You're going to have an angel say, hey, come hang out with this guy. Oh, come out and hang out with this girl. You're not hanging out with this person? No, why? They're going to say, oh, my Lord, I feel like I'm right near Jehovah. Oh. They're going to feel like they're right near Jehovah when they get near you. And this is the type of level of anointing God wants to bring his people today in the church. This is what God wants us to be. This is exactly where he wants you to be. Raise it up and be where God wants you to be. 